In this video, we're going to take a look at other things you can do with images in HTML. One of the things we can do with images that we haven't dealt with at this point is creating a link in the image so that when you click on it, it takes you to another place. Let's uh, display an image using the image element, SRC, uh, resource locator is, let's see, this file right here. It's called groucho.jpg. Groucho marks. Save and take a look. Okay, here's our picture of Groucho Marx. And what we want to do, currently I can click on this and nothing happens. But what I'm going to do is set up a link so that when I click on this, it will take me to the index page. To do that, we wrap our in image in a link. So I set up my hypertext reference equals index.html. And then we end the link. So let's try that. So here's our image. When we move our cursor over it, it turns from an arrow to a pointing finger, and when I click on it, it should take me to the index which says, hello world, and this is the link. Now, let's say I have some text. Here is some text. I'll do an H, H1 here, put in Groucho Marx. Now, when we view this, it should show us our text and the picture, and it will do it in the same order that the text appears here. Groucho Marx, here's some text, here's some more text. Images by default take their own space on the HTML page. You cannot have text sitting normally over top of an image. To do that, what we have to do is define the image as being in the background. So let's take a look at how we do that. I'll delete this. In previous versions of HTML, the way to do this was to, in the head, define uh, a, a background image definition. In HTML, we don't do that. What we do is create what's called a division, like this. I'm going to set up a style in that division. We'll look at styles later, but this is something that you can make use of. So the style is a background image, and I'm giving the URL to that image. And I'm going to define its width and its height. And then I'm going to close the division. Now what this does is it's setting up a, an area which is defined as being 
this image. So this is actually one image in the background. Let's see what happens if we can actually get this to work. There it is. Now at the moment we don't know if this is foreground or background. It could be either one. What we need to do is we need to place some text over it to see if indeed it is a background image. So let's, within the division, place some text. So we'll put in a paragraph and we'll style this one to be color white because text is normally black. So we're going to make the text white. And we'll end the paragraph tag. Let's see if this works. Reload that. And here we are. Here's text over top of a background image. Now, the reason I'm showing you this, although this gets a little bit ahead of us in terms of cascading style sheets and styles, it does show us a kind of a formula that you can use if at this point you want to place image, images in the background. Finally, we're going to take a look at fave icons. Fave icons are those little pictures that you see for example, Dynamic Drive has a D beside it. And if you were to bookmark a page like this, the image would go in beside it. So in order to develop a fave icon, I go to Dynamic Drive. So it's tools.dynamicdrive.com slash fave icon slash. And this gives you the opportunity to choose a file, upload it to their generator, create it, and then use it in your website. Here's our Groucho file, and I'm going to shift and drag to make a square. Now that square can be any size. We can up upload to the generator any size as long as it's bigger than 48 by 48. In this case, I think we're looking at something around 70 pixels. I'm going to crop it and save it. Save for web as a 256 color PNG file. Save it and I'll call it Groucho Save PNG. And then here in Save Icon Generator, I'll choose Groucho Fave.png. It says you can use either GIF, GIF, JPEG, PNG, BMP. What I've chosen is to merge with a 32 by 32 desktop icon or a 48 by 48. 32 by 32 is the standard size for most browsers. Most browsers then take that 32 by 32 icon and, it, and they reduce it to 16 by 16. Internet Explorer can use a 48 by 48. So this will should create an icon that any browser can use. Create the icon. Here it's showing you some examples. And this is the 16 by 16 preview. And we'll download it. And here it is here. So I'm going to copy it in, and I'm going to replace the old one. So here's our, our new one. It is actually 48 by 48, and it will get reduced automatically by my browser. 
Now the next thing you have to do is you have to put in a link. And that link would resemble something like this. So if it's in the root, and you can see here's our index and all of our pages. Here's our fav icon. So it's at the root. Then all I have to do is copy this little bit of text and put it in the head of our page. And this should be it. So we'll save this and view it. And here we are. There it is right up there.